What's up, guys? It's Busteroni. I'm uh, making my first tutorial uh, in, the first, in the last couple of months. I thought I'd get back into it. And um, I'm making a tutorial on web development in Python, specifically using the WebPY framework. Um, I've been using this framework for a while now, actually, a couple of years, and um, I really enjoy it. Um, pretty much a framework, if you guys don't know, is like it's um, pretty much code that someone else wrote that you can use for your own projects. And a web framework is a, it's a framework used to make websites, obviously. So um, I really like WebPY because I feel like it's really simple to use and yet powerful. I don't really feel restricted using it. It's not like some other applications where, um, like I'm thinking of um, maybe Django, which I don't really have much experience with, but I feel like Django is a lot of things going behind the scenes. I don't really know what is happening. Um, and WebPY, one file you'll see today, very easy to use and um, it's really very not restricting and you'll, you'll see. Um, so the first thing we're, we're gonna wanna do to start is we're gonna need to install WebPY. So um, you can do that by going into terminal. Um, for command prompt for Windows and other things, um, there's, uh, there's similar options, but for Mac at least you're gonna be using terminal. And you're gonna wanna type in um, pip. If you, if you don't have pip, you can install, look up how to install it, it's really easy. But um, pip is just a Python package manager. You're going to write pip install web.py. Um, and you might get an error. Um, so I already downloaded it. If you get an error, like you don't have permission, you can put sudo first, which means like you're going to use admin permissions. And then you're going to type in your password. And I'll get the same error because I already have it. But if that doesn't work, just look up your problem. And if it's still the error, you can post a comment. And I'll try to help you, or someone else will try to help you. So now that I have web.py, I can actually get started. Um, I really just installed all of the code that's already been written that lets me use WebPY. Um, so I'm going to go into Finder, wherever you want to make your code, wherever you want to write it. I'm just going to make a new directory right here called, let's say, um, YouTube. Um, and then I'm going to go into Terminal, and I'm going to change my directory to be into the YouTube directory. So when I do that, I can do CD. This is my home directory right here. And I'm going to say CD slash desktop, and you can use tab to autocomplete if you want, slash YouTube. And now I'm inside the YouTube directory. If I want to list all my files in the YouTube directory, I can do ls. Right now it's an empty directory, so nothing's going to show up. But um, I'm going to make a file, and I'm going to call it, so I'm going to go into blind text. You can do whatever you want. Um, I just use some blind text as my code editor. Um, I'm just going to write, I'm going to save the file as desktop, YouTube, call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call it app.py. App this means it's in a Python file, and app is just what I'm calling it. It's a web application, but that's up to you again. Um, so I'm going to write the first line of code for what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do to write a WebPY application is import web. And what this does is it imports the WebPY framework, and let's just use all of the, uh, all the code that's already been written for WebPY. So I'm just going to save it and make sure the file runs correctly with no errors. So I can type in Python app.py. And no errors, it ran fine. Nothing happened because I haven't done anything yet. If I run ls, I'll see I have app.py now in my directory. So first thing we need to do for WebPY is we need to give it some URLs of our website. Um, so when you think about it, if you have a website, right, let's say you have like example.com. So this is what example.com looks like. Um, we're going to have some URLs. For example, we might have test as one, um, whatever you want. Uh, if you think about it as a website, actually every website, when you go to the web page, it's actually showing you the main directory, the home directory, and that's just a slash. So I'll show you an example of that. If I go to example.com, um, what's really happening is it's showing me this directory, just the slash, and it will actually redirect you. But what's really happening is I'm actually at that slash for this web page. I'm at the home directory of the web page. So the way you're going to do that, you can write URLs equals, and we're using a Python element uh, data type called a tuple, which is used to store pretty much elements of data. And I'm going to say, um, using a quotation, a string, I'm going to say slash. And I'm going to name that whatever I want. Um, I'm going to call it index just because that's what it is. It's the index of the website. But you could call this whatever you want right here. Um, just index to me makes the most sense. We're going to come down here, and we're going to do one more thing. We're going to say if name equals name. And what this is doing is it's saying that as soon as we run our code, 
We're going to come down here, and this is going to be true, and we're going to start with our program right here. It's a little bit confusing. Um, I'm not really the best one to explain this. I'm going to post a link in the description explaining what this actually means. But essentially, when we start running our program, it's going to come down here. Um, I'm going to create the web application. The way you do that, so you can say app equals web.application URLs globals. What this is saying is that our application, our app, which we declared, we can call it whatever we want. We can call it app test. We can call it anything we want. Equals web, which comes from up here. We're making an application with the URLs. Again, this could be called whatever we want. The variable names don't matter. These are just standard. They make sense. Why not call them URLs? And then globals is just the global variables, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then we can do app.run, which just runs our app. Now, if we run this, let's see what happens. It's giving us a URL for our website. This is where our website's actually running. So we can actually go to this in our browser. I already have it up right here. Press enter, and we're gonna get an error, but we see that our, our, our web server is actually running. The reason we get an error is because I'm at the index, I'm at the main, right? But it can't find the index. There's no code written to handle when a user goes to the index of the website. So it came over here, it saw the URL was a slash, it saw it's the index, but there's no code handling what happens when we find the index. So we're gonna write that now. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a new class, uh, which is a way, the, the way the web PY handles um, URLs like that, class index. And we're gonna write a method inside of this class. We're gonna call it get. The reason we call this get, well, there, there are two main things we'll be going over, at least for these tutorials, get and post. And they're both ways of accessing web content. Um, get is what you use normally, right? When you come over here, you're actually saying, I want to get the content for this. I want to get 0, 0, 0, 0, 80, 80. I want to get the index of this page. If I were to go slash test, which is not found, by the way, um, I would be getting slash test of this page. A post, for example, is if you submit a login form, you're posting data, you're submitting data, and that's what a post is. But for this first tutorial, at least, we're going to be focusing on get. So I'm saying... When the user accesses the index, when they get something from the index, I want to do something. The way that we're going to give the user some kind of response is by using return. Let's say return hello world. And what we're doing right here, again, I'm going to go over one more time. When we access a page, I'm just going to run it and show you what happens, then I'll go through it. So it says hello world. So it worked. What happened was we essentially came down, we're running the application, it says, oh, I'm at slash, I'm at the index, this right here. I'm at the class index, and I'm getting, I'm, I did a get request. And once the user does a get request, I'm going to return the text, hello world. And really here, we can do whatever we want within this. I can have a variable like test equals five, and I can say hello world um, plus test. I think I'm going to need to wrap that in a string. Yeah, so you can't concatenate string and integer, right? Because this is an integer, and I try to add it to a string. So I have to, I have to um, convert this to be a string by wrapping it in str. And then when we run this, hello world 5. Um, again, I'm returning hello world, and then t test, which is 5, uh, converted to a string. So that's cool, right? But it's not really useful. Every single time you run the web page, we're going to be getting returned hello world. And that's not really useful. So let's find a more practical use for this. Uh, what we can do is we can do something called regex, which is pretty much a way of interacting with, I, I, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. It's a way of interacting with characters and identifying certain characters. If I look up a definition, it'll probably be more clear. Um, regex is like a sequence of characters that define a pattern. So I'll give you an example because it's definitely kind of confusing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say... Put it in parentheses. So if I want to have like a variable as like my get request, I'm going to put it in parentheses. And the way that regex works is that there's a bunch of characters that do different things. Um, so a period says match any character, right? So that's going to be match any character. And now that I have a new kind of match in here wrapped in parentheses, I'm going to have a new parameter in my get, which I can call whatever I want. Um, I'm going to call it name. And I'm going to say, instead of returning hello world, I'm going to want to return the person's name every time. So it's going to say hello name. Um, so when we run this, let's just run through it real quick. By the way, the way I'm not stopping this, I want to go over that real quick. 
I'm doing control C, which will stop the application from running. So what I do is I press the up arrow. I want to stop it. I do control C. It stops it. I'm good. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say hello. So it's not found, right? When you think about it, it's not found because it's not looking for just the home page anymore, but it's also looking for a character after the home page. So I'm going to say hello slash A. And now I'll actually write out hello A, right? If I do hello B, we'll say hello B. Um, what if I do multiple characters, right? Let's try hello ABC. It's not found. The reason is, is because it's only looking for one character after the slash. If I want to make it look for more characters, I can do a plus. And this will say, look for zero or more of a dot. Zero or more, right? So let's see what happens if I run this. Zero or more of any character. So I run this, it will say hello ABC, right? It will work with just one character. It will not work for zero characters, right? Let's just go to regexer, which is a page where we can kind of test your regex. So what I have right now is I have a dot plus. Sorry, I'm, I'm, plus is a one or more of the preceding token. So, right, A, that's a match. This is, these are all matches. These are all matches. Um, so an asterisk is zero or more. So if I wanted to do, if I wanted to just return an empty string, just to hello, if the user didn't give me anything, I could do this. I'd come back here, and it would actually work now. It would just be an empty string. There would be no name. Um, but you might want to require them to input a name. So you might want to do a plus rather than a dot. Because the plus will say, we need at least one character for it to work. So yeah, this is just a really basic demo of WebPY to show you how the idea of how it works. Um, in future tutorials, I'm going to go over more, uh, more detailed examples. We'll start making actual useful websites. It's just a fun, easy demo. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any comments, or questions, or recommendations, uh, you can feel free to comment below. Uh, thanks for watching.